Hi, this is Billy with the OutdoorsMissouri.com, and today we're going to tear down uh, my Ruger 1022. Even we're going to tear down the trigger group and everything today. So um, uh, this is uh, pretty much factory stock. Uh, I cut off the end of the the stock there to, so that we could free float the barrel, and uh, to kind of show you that it's free floated. What do I got laying around here? Got a little piece of sandpaper here, but it's free floated. So all the way back to the way back there. Okay. So that's uh, that was one thing that I did. But we're gonna go ahead and tear into this guy. And 1022s are probably one of the easiest to tear down. So we're just gonna start by loosening that main screw. Okay, we're just going to back it up. Alright. So now, uh, you want to make sure that your safety is halfway in between safe and unsafe. Make sure that your chamber is clear before you do any kind of work on your firearms, okay? That's kind of a given. And we're just going to pull that off. Now, you notice that was a little tight. And there's a reason for that. Um, they're usually not tight like that, but what I've done is I've got some compound that I put inside of the stock to bed that action down. Okay? So there we got our stock. Now the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to, I like to use a little punch, and we're going to press these pins out here, just like that and that's going to release your trigger assembly. Okay, and then your next one is the bolt back here or the, not the bolt, the pin. Now this is going to be typically a uh, metal pin, but what I've done is I've replaced it with uh, what they call a bolt buffer. Okay, so this is actually a tight fitting bolt buffer. So I'm going to just smack this one loose there it is. Okay, so and that's our bolt buffer. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull this bolt back. We're going to lift up, let the uh, charge handle go, and it all falls out just like so. Okay, and if you want to take it a step further, uh, you can pull the barrel off. So it's just an Allen head, and you got to work it slowly, and then you pull the barrel off, and that's the best way to clean your barrel. Uh, if you're going to really get in there with some solvent, uh, maybe some Hoppies number nine. I prefer uh, Shooter's Choice uh, for heavy fouling, but uh, that's my uh, little Ruger 1022. Okay, I'm not going to take the barrel off today. Uh, simply because uh, I just did this. Uh, I cleaned the barrel already. So now we've got our bolt, charge handle, and a trigger group, and um, our two pins. Now, uh, while you have this out, if you have access to a Dremel tool, um, you might polish these at, you know surfaces here. Just get them real nice and shiny. I like to do that because uh, it just seems to cycle a lot better that way. I've even polished the face of this a little bit. Okay, and uh, go ahead and hit that a little bit. It makes it just run so smooth, it's like glass. Okay, so here is our trigger group. Now, as with all, as with most everything, you take apart. Uh, it's it's a lot easier taking it apart than it is putting it back together. But this is actually a pretty simple setup. So uh, what I'm going to do here is we're going to put our safety on fire position, put my thumb over the hammer, and pull the trigger and slowly release that. Now the reason why you do that is because this is going to want to slam forward and the spring will pop out. So the next thing I do, get my smaller punch here, 
is I'm going to pu push the pins out. Push that one out. Okay. And then there's one more. So, oh, there's a pin here too. Forgot about that. Okay. So that, that pin holds almost everything together. And then this will come out. That's your ejector. Um, this guy should fall out. You gotta pull your bolt release deal out. So we'll pull that mag release out, pull that out, bolt release, the hammer fell out, this fell out. We've got spring, 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 and your trigger. Everything's empty except for the safety. You don't need to take this out. Uh, just a little piece of information for you. When you do take this uh, trigger apart, you know, when you go to re-lubricate it, don't use an oil. Use a dry lubricant such as heavy silicone. Uh, spray and that cuts down on the grease and the grind that gets down in there uh, it doesn't have anywhere to stick so it just goes away and um, you're left to bare bones here now we're going to reassemble it and this can get kind of tricky so that's why I'm doing it for you uh, step by step here so the first thing we want to worry about is our trigger and how that's positioned. Now you can even take this off if you'd like. Uh, and if you do end up taking it off, that's the way it's supposed to face. Okay? So that when you go to put it back on, uh, you don't get that wrong. So we're going to... There's a little groove there for this spring here. And I really polish these parts before I put them back together. And that's where your spring's going to go. It's just going to be in there like that. And then I hold this sideways and I just place this ever so gently into the, the trigger housing. Then you need this. This sits behind the trigger. So go ahead and place that in now because it's going to get really tough to do later. Okay, so I'm just going to look here. There we go. So I'm just lining them up. You can take a really thin punch and just make them line up a little bit better if you can. Okay. And then we we got to pin it. So now it's pinned. Okay. And so then the next thing you want to do, I like to clean these up you know because they get a little worn from popping magazines in and out and this little this is your bolt release or I'm sorry this is your uh, magazine release and to put that in there you just set it the way it came out just like you normally would push this down and set it in there that way it's got some tension on it and it kinda holds itself in there and that's part of the reason why this pin falls out all the time. I don't know if anybody else, I have that problem. Because it kind of sits under its own pressure, this one pin is the one that falls out all the time. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and put our hammer back on. And um, it's kind of all got to go in together. So we're going to put this spring back in. It goes into a little hole back there. You want to make sure that it's positioned correctly. If you got small enough hands to do that, great. If not, use a screwdriver. Okay. Oh, one more thing. Let's put the spring on now because you won't be able to get it in there later. And that spring goes on so that the crooked angle is going is going to actually rest on this part right here. Okay, so that's going to, if 
flip over like this and this angle right here that's gonna rest on it on your bolt release uh, this one's been made into an auto bolt release all we did was Dremel that out and it works great so then we're gonna set this hammer back in and eyeball it looks pretty good Oop. And now we're going to pin it. So this takes the bigger pin. Oops. Man, I'm having a hard time today. Put that back in. Put your spring in. And the pin. Now we're pinned. Okay. So then I want to place this in there, and this is going to re go in like this, so this side is going to, is, it sits in there like this, in a way, okay? There's that. And then this is going to sit right next to your bolt release. This is your ejector. It's going to sit right next to the bolt release. And then we're going to put a pin about halfway in, not all the way, because the spring needs to be set. So we need to flip it around. Okay, and you're just going to kind of push this down. And that spring's going to go underneath this pin here. Okay. And the next pin is going to hold in your bolt release and your magazine release. It's going to pin them together. This one can be a booger just because it's got its own pressure, so it kind of sits wherever it wants. Putting it in this way seemed to work a little better this time. All right, so now to put your trigger groups back together, you did whatever you wanted to do. Maybe you wanted to polish the sear, maybe you wanted to make an auto bolt release, uh, whatever the case may be. Now you put it back together. It's all nice and clean and shiny. And uh, now we're going to just place the bolt back in, and we're going to put our charge handle in. And the more you push on it on the outside, the harder it's going to fight you. So it's just easier to push it out with a screwdriver and just use the other hand to hold tension on it. And I just push it straight back. And your bolt falls right in. It's in there. And then, simply enough, you push your trigger group back in there and you pin it maybe a little tap with a soft screwdriver kind of help it get started maybe not that one went in there we go and then the bolt buffer I actually, I mean, we made this on a, a mill out of some Delron. It works just great. And we're going to tap that in because it's nice, it fits nice and snug. And then to put it back on the, the put it back on the stock, you just want it halfway in between. Lay it down. Now with this one, like I said, I got the compound in the to kind of push it and we tighten it up and 
Now as long as you don't move the scope, bump the scope, hit the scope, you're going to be pretty close. You're never going to be right on where you were when you take something apart that far. So what you want to do is, but you'll be close. Now if you don't care, you want to take the scope off to clean it, whatever. Go ahead and do that. Thanks for watching. Come visit us at www.theoutdoorsmissouri.com.